It's been one month since Maryland, Maryland jogger and mom of five, Rachel Marin, was found brutally murdered on a popular hiking trail. Tonight, her killer's still on the loose, and the authorities convinced he will strike again. But now, Marin's family is enlisting the help of a criminal profiler to try to help track down the suspected serial killer. She'll join us in a moment. Police identified the suspect in the case using DNA. DNA evidence is, is part of nearly every modern day investigation. And in Rachel's case, DNA evidence was collected by our forensic services unit. That DNA was analyzed by the Maryland State Police and it was ran through the National CODIS system. DNA evidence is, I mean, this DNA evidence has come back as a match tied to a home invasion and, insult, and an assault of a young girl in Los Angeles this past March. Unfortunately, that suspect has not been positively identified, but he did leave behind his DNA. The Harford County Sheriff's Office obtained video from the LAPD showing the suspect leaving a scene where he's accused of assaulting a young girl during a home invasion. This is the same man they believe killed Rachel, said to be 5'9", 160, his early to mid-20s, Hispanic descent. Officials believe he acted alone, was likely someone she didn't know. It's possible random act of violence. Crime Stoppers now offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. Pat Brown, the profiler, has compiled potential traits that could be helpful. The family has put them on these flyers that are being passed around the community. It suggests the suspect has psychopathic traits, must know someone in the area. If he traveled there from California, is an opportunistic predator who had a reason to be in the area of the trail, so it's likely that he lives or works near the trail. Rachel Marin was reported missing on August the 5th by her boyfriend after she set off for a hike around 6 o'clock, never returned. Officers found her car at the trailhead the next day. Hours later, a volunteer searcher found her body. And now, nearly three weeks after releasing the video, the Harford County Sheriff's telling us even last week they aren't any closer to identifying who or where the suspect is. We, we have no idea. He could still be here. He could be back in Los Angeles. He could be anywhere in the country or really outside the country. So right now, until someone comes in and identifies him and we're able to pin him down, uh, we want our citizens to be aware that he could be around the next corner. Joining us now is Pat Brown. She is an investigative criminal profiler who's working with Rachel Marin's family to try to generate leads on her killer. Uh, Pat, thanks a lot for coming on the program. I have to appreciate it. I, look, I, I have to tell you, I am surprised that they haven't found this guy yet. And I only say that because the video is clear enough that mm -hmm. if someone would recognize him, if they know him, they would say, oh, yeah, that's the guy you're not? Well, Dan, it's the back of his head. That is the problem. And it is, it is curious how nobody has identified him yet. But the important thing is his DNA is there from that crime and his DNA is in the Rachel Morin crime. And that is what is so fascinating because this at least identifies the killer, although we don't know his name, we know who, who it is. Yeah. But the most important thing now is to have people identify him because unless they identify him, you know, we can wait on the DNA maybe matching at some point in time, but we need to identify him and that's why i wrote this profile up this it's a, it's not just a profile it's actually a five bullet point chart and let me explain that tell it yeah tell I us about it yeah please this is so important i have been arguing for years that when you have you go to the public and you ask them for information what you don't want to do is just say hey if you know anything give us a ring and people say what is it i'm supposed to know <laughs> so I have always pushed for the police releasing some sort of bullet point chart. Here is what you, you need to be looking for. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Then people can see that and send in decent tips to the, the department, to the police, instead of a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, I want to point out, just to be very clear about this, uh, the family came to me and asked if I could help. I put this together. This is pro bono. But I also said to the family, check with the Harford County sheriff's office and be sure they approve of this because mm. it, I'm not working with them and I don't want to interfere with the investigation. And they went to them and the, the Harford County Sheriff's Office did a, 
say it's okay to disseminate this. So I was very pleased that they approved of, essentially approved of the, the flyer that was going to go out to the community and had these very important five points on it. So we're showing, we've been showing a graphic of the, uh, the five points that you laid out. Um, what do you think is the most important thing? I mean, obviously you'd like people to read the whole thing, right? I understand that. <laughs> but, but if there is, you know, if there's anything in here which is particularly significant for people to think about, that, that might help trigger what you're talking about, right? Which is someone saying, okay, I don't necessarily recognize this guy, but. Right. Well, the problem is the but, Dan. Uh, so first of all, he's a suspected serial killer. He's a danger to the community. He's a psychopath. Please read up on my things about a psychopath. Narcissistic, he lies, he takes advantage of you. He only cares about himself. But three, he came from L.A. to Bel Air. It's Bel Air, Bel Air is 40 minutes northeast of Baltimore. Why is he there? Because this is not a normal place you just jump off of a bus and end up. So he had to know somebody there. So there is someone in Bel Air who knows him. And then they have to know that he is near that trail for some reason. He's either running on it or he's living near there, working near there. And, and the fifth one is he had to be missing between 6 p.m. on August 5th until dusk. That, oh, those are the five points. I'm sorry I pushed them, but I want all five points heard by the community. It's very, very important. Look, I, I'm all for you laying them all out. I think it's important <laughs> for you to provide the context, too, because, look, if anything triggers someone who's listening or watching to say, oh, actually, you know, uh, here's something I can add, right? Because even if yes. they don't know him per se, they may have something to add. They may have they some have tip. Somebody, but somebody does know him, Dan. The problem yeah. a lot of people have is they don't recognize what they should be looking for. And, and they also have to be willing to call the sheriff's department or send yep. them some information because no one likes to be a rat. You know what I mean? Well, so, I don't know about that. Like, I don't want to. I don't, I don't know about that. I, I got to tell you, it's not my cousin. Yeah, in a case like this, you know, uh, considering the assault on a girl it's and the murder of a woman, uh, people are going to be, I think, you know, more. The guy's a suspected serial killer. Get him off the streets. Yep, Pat Brown. Hey, thanks a lot for coming on the program. Really appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Dan. So, thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.